Uh, by the time you see this, which will be the day after tomorrow, we will have done a talk last night, which will be tomorrow for us. <laughs> sort that out. And part of the talk is about the perils of buying a boat. So what we thought we'd do is we'd share some of that talk with you. And we thought we'd talk about the perils of buying a boat, because obviously some years ago we bought a boat. Bev and I are boat owners. And we didn't really appreciate some of the things that we should have done. We were very lucky. We got away with a lot of things. And looking back on it in retrospect, um, it was just sheer dumb luck in our case. We see other people who go out and buy new to them boats. And the thing about it is, when you buy a boat, whether it's brand new from the yard or new to you, a used boat, you never really know what you're buying. You're not only buying the boat, you're buying all the problems that the previous owners left you on the boat, as well as all the nice stuff they left you on the boat. Um, so even a boat like this, which has obviously got a few problems and you'd be wary about, uh, is one thing. But a really, really nice boat that looks gorgeous and in great condition, you might think to yourself, what could possibly be wrong with this boat? Well, there's a number of things. Let's start with wiring. So when Beverly and I bought Salty Lass, uh, we did have a survey done. And um, in the survey, the gentleman looked at the electronics and all he did was, does this light switch work on, on or off? Does it actually work? But he didn't actually look at the wiring. He certainly didn't pull any of the wiring out because there was bits of um, tape just wrap round any old how and um, if that was a house that would be condemned that would be say rip that wiring out and start again so it's just one of the things that even if you have a survey like we did there will be things that are missed purely because in the survey all it says is does it work yes or no whereas the actual state of the wiring is something completely different and is not in the survey the reason um, that the wiring is not included is because a lot of the wiring is inaccessible. Um, like um, it's behind panels, it's in trunking. There's lots of different places like our binnacle. The wiring on our binnacle was an absolute disgrace. And we had some solar panels that were on the roof. The wiring for that was uh, abysmal, but we also had other wiring in a locker that just, oh, it just had to go. As an electrical engineer, I'm sorry, there are things I just can't cope with and bad wiring is one of them. Other little issues um, are switches. We did not appreciate <laughs> what all the switches did. Ours come with a little panel with funny pictures on it. And um, we looked at that, we thought, yeah, there's everything we need to know. <laughs> Turned out it wasn't. Um, first thing we did when we got on the boat was try and turn the electric on. It took us quite a while to figure that out. We pressed quite a few buttons. Eventually we find a button when you press it, put on a lovely red light, and we seemed to have electric around about that point in time, so we were all good. Turned out the red light was the immersion. We had it on for two days before we figured that out. <laughs> the main electrical switch was next to it. We'd obviously just done them both. Um, but other things that can get you is switches you don't know you have because they're not in obvious places. And every boat is different, and every boat is modified by the people who owned it previously. So on day one of this, when we were at sea, we had to anchor for a rest uh, in an area because there was no marinas near us. We had to anchor, so we dropped this onto the seabed. Uh, we had a bit of an incident with our dinghy in which it went overboard, so we tried to lift this to go after the dinghy and we broke the windlass. Um, it stopped working and I had to bring the anchor up by, by hand. By the time we'd done that, the dinghy was clearly heading for the rocks and so we had to drop the anchor back down again by hand. So on day one, we had lost the dinghy and we broke the um, we broke the anchor windlass. Great start for day one of owning a boat. <laughs> Perils of owning a boat. <sighs> it became obvious to me that it was going to have to be fixed. But I'll be honest, I was intimidated. It's a new boat. I don't know quite what I'm doing. I don't know enough marine stuff. This is an expensive piece of kit and it's going to have to be replaced. And I felt like a dork because I'd broken it. So first thing to do was trace all the wiring back because I was going to have to disconnect everything and I traced it back and underneath the chart table 
I find this rather odd looking switch which had the words on and off and the wire seemed to go into it. It was set to off so I pushed it to on, tried the windlass, boom it worked. It's the trip switch. We didn't know it was there. If we'd known it was there that night in Lady Bay maybe we would have rescued the dinghy. Who knows? But we certainly weren't going to do it with this. This, this state that we had it in, it was an absolute disaster. So knowing where everything does in your boat, taking the time to learn every switch and find everything, going over every inch of the inside, maybe it's a good idea. So one of the things um, that Beverly and I weren't really aware about, we had used slab reap thing before. Um, however, we didn't realise just how badly set up the slab reefing on this boat was. Um, because when we initially got the boat, there was no way that we could actually reef our third reef, purely because all the ropes and everything were in the wrong place. So we never got as much performance as we did later. It's just one of those things that you learn from experience. But there will always be something that maybe you haven't had experience of or is slightly different on your boat. You know, no two boats are the same. Even when I've been on other Bavarias, they're not quite done exactly the same as our Bavaria. So, you know, you're always having to learn something just because it's your new your boat. So other issues that we just didn't even think about because we were so green was diesel bug yeah that's true we didn't we never considered diesel bug <laughs> we just got the boat and boom out we went we filled it up and we were up half an hour out and I'm already on the helm what we need to do once we turn south is put those sails off <laughs> we're off woohoo <laughs> and we were lucky Turns out the previous owners had a can of fuel set in the um, in the locker. They'd obviously been dosing the diesel. But since then, we've seen an awful lot of boats that people have gone and bought. And they're chugging their way home, and all of a sudden the engine stops. And when they take the filters off, they are chock-a-block with diesel plug. And the reason seems to be that there are some skippers who either didn't use the boat for a long time. Well, they're trying to sell it, so they're not really going out and using it. Yeah, and it could also be the other kind of skipper who, it's a sailboat, if I use the engine it's a badge of shame, and I'm going to get one season out of a single can of diesel. Yeah, I certainly know somebody who uses one uh, tank of diesel for the entire season. And the thing is, modern diesel does not keep, by, by the end of about three months it's starting to go bad, by the end of six months it's junk. Mm. So, so it was just one of those things that didn't even cross our minds did it Bev? Not even slightly, we were lucky. <laughs> when we got back to Liverpool the fuel set ran out and we stopped using it because we didn't know really what it was for and within one filter change uh, we did. We had diesel bug on top of the filter. We did um, just because diesel is not necessarily as clean as you would like. Yep so after that we uh, put a couple of shock doses in we started using the fuel set and after that our filters stay sparkly clean. They certainly do. And we don't keep the diesel. The other issue um, was the equipment on the boat. I mean, so we had so much stuff. It was ridiculous. Something I could have done without. I could have done without the six used joker valves that had poop stuff to them. <laughs> that is very true. But the other thing that we could really have done without was this absolutely huge um, reel a floating line. Yes, I mean, we had it on board. It was a, there was some ridiculous amount. I remember them saying, I think it was 150 feet of the stuff or something like that. It was a lot. It was a lot. We thought, well, that'll be good. We'll use it for something. It's floating line, it won't go into the boat. We'll tie it to the dinghy. Yes, and that's exactly what we did on uh, day one, was we uh, tied it to the dinghy, didn't we, Beverly? Except all the floating line of this kind gets hard and doesn't like being turned around curves like in knots. We find that out the hard way when the dinghy went for a burden. <laughs> That's why we lost the dinghy. The knots just untied themselves, didn't they? <laughs> they certainly did. So, you know, these are just some of the perils that we had. I mean, when, when you get a rope on a boat, it's a rope on a boat. Yeah, but the pe previous owners had it. They must have trusted it. They kept it. So obviously they use it. Why wouldn't we use it? Exactly. It's just one of those things, you know, but that wasn't the only equipment that was a bit dodgy, you know, but 
we have taken it out and the six years joker valves are definitely at the bottom of the list. <laughs> yeah the joker valves was definitely we... <laughs> whoever, whoever left them is a bit of a joker <laughs> <laughs> So um, that's it for this little chit chat um, of some of the perils of owning a new boat. Hopefully the talk tomorrow night, which will be last night for you, will have gone well. Yeah. <laughs> that's, and a, that's in your past, but it's in our future. Yeah. And there will be other things in that. And we'll talk to you about those next week. <laughs> um, yeah, but let's just leave it there. So with a bit of luck, it'll all go, to, it'll all go swimmingly tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> we can always hope. <laughs> And if not, we'll try and rescue it with this video. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching as usual. Uh, any comments, leave them down below. And uh, remember to share, like and subscribe. Well, this is just a quick update on our situation and what we're going to be doing this summer. Uh, but the top and bottom of it is we are going to be sailing around Belfast Lock and the main reason for that Beverly is my mum's health is deteriorating uh, people have often said is why don't you sail south till the butter melts and get nice and warm and get a good suntan the reason is family my mum needs me and she needs me now more than ever mm. so we're gonna have to stay in Bangor for the summer and there's no point in going anywhere in the winter again so we're probably going to be here for quite some time we still intend to sail as much as we can do uh, we'll be sailing locally around here. Um, we're not too sure how far away we'll get to sail or whether we will get particularly a huge amount of time off. But there's still lots of sailing projects we want to do. Absolutely. And um, it might just mean that our schedule goes to once a fortnight. But do rest assured, we do want to keep the channel going, don't we, Beverly? We definitely want to keep the channel going because it's a great way to stay in contact with other sailors and we really enjoy that. But it's just that we're going to have to be here doing things. So we've arranged to extend our winter jobs that we usually do while we're here. And the company that we work for seems to be delighted with the idea we're going to buy a bike, which is good news. Absolutely. Um, but, you know, it's got to be quick things because we are working. Um, so it's just what we want. We just wanted to keep you updated on what we're doing. Yes. So... You know, if you're in around the area, um, do give us a shout because we'll we'll be here for some time by the looks of it. And um, hopefully we'll, you know, be able to keep putting quality content out. If we feel we can't put quality content out, and as Gainer says, what we'll probably do is change the frequency of the episodes so that we're not turning out, you know, rubbish. Just, yeah. to, just to keep a schedule. But um, I guess that's the way it is, isn't it? Yeah, it is the way it is, and um, so we don't, we don't want to end on a negative note. We want to end on a positive note. There are lots of sailing things that we need to do. Uh, lots of, I mean, you're, there's, there's the unfinished yacht master that was interrupted by COVID. Yes, yeah, so we could get back onto that. Um, there's a couple of things that we have always wanted to do, but have never got round to it. Mm -hmm. So there are stuff that we want to do. But there is one video project's been in the burner for about two years. Exactly. Because but, because every time the weather's good enough to do it for somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> it is what it is and if anything sailors are fatalistic. I think you have to be. You have to deal with what it is. You can stand on the bow of the boat screaming at the waves and the wind. It doesn't make any difference. You gotta deal with what you have. And that's what we're gonna do. And that's what we're gonna be doing. So we'll leave it there and we'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>